Hey everybody, John and Lance from the bench. Mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Let's talk some Astros baseball. Carlos Correa, man, what an offseason he's having. He has certainly been the most outspoken guy on the Astros this year. And when he, you know, you remember when he first came up, the number one overall pick, everybody, we all thought he was going to be A-Rod, Lance, and, you know, but then it, he just didn't really turn into that team leader, that guy. It was Altuve, and then George Springer became the heart of the team and, and so much. But, but man, I don't know. Maybe Carlos Correa is the face of this team right now. So you got to you – this, this has been a difficult question all along. How do you hold on to him? It's tough because, you know, Correa is one of those guys that tends to show up in, in big moments uh, for this organization. He did in 17 – um, I think he he did to an extent. Uh, well, he he kind of came out of it a little bit in, at the end of the Indian series in '18, and then into the playoffs. Um, you know, he's got got a way of hitting big home runs. He's just got a way of making big plays. We know he's an elite defender. This off season, he he got off to a great start, and then at the end of the year, you look at the numbers and say, and you say, what's the big deal? But then you get to the postseason and look at the way Carlos Correa commands his at-bats. Look at the way, you know, he he continues to look like one of the alphas on the team. And he always has conducted himself in that way and carried himself in that way. But this is another teaser in the in, in the postseason that gives you a glimpse into what you think he might be able to become. The problem has been you can't get a full 162 out of him, number one. And then number two, his production – doesn't match our expectations. So I, I this is tricky for me, John. You can end up giving him a long-term expensive deal and maybe get the Carlos Correa who hits in the, the 700, you know, in a 760 OPS range, 780, and that's not going to be equal to what he's going to get paid on the market. Yeah, and I, I don't expect the Astros to be spending throwing money around. I just don't. I, I, I just think that they're with, with Verlander making his money and then being out, even if it's just a quarter because of the insurance. But with Granke, you can't, you're not going to be able to get rid of that deal. I, 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 they're not throwing, I, I don't think, because they haven't, Springer, they're not throwing all that money over $100 million at Springer. They've got money invested in Bregman. They've got money invested in Altuve. Already talked about Granke, that deal. You're going to have to pay some of these guys. Do you keep McCullers after what you've seen right now out of McCullers, another injury-prone guy where you're going to have, you know, or Katie's you know, going to be in, in the future and whatnot. I just think that they're going to go cheaper. That this whole thing about do who do you keep Springer or Correa or you know what what how can you get another Verlander or whatever? I, I just don't see it. I just I think they're going to go cheap here over the next few years. <laughs> Look, you signed Yuli, but that's the least attractive of all the potential you know guys on the market. I mean, Yuli is who you signed, and he's the one who's performing the worst. You've got Bregman, you've got Altuve. You've got Jordan under, you know, club control. But I think you've got to keep one of Correa. And Correa's not immediate, but he's coming up pretty quickly. You've got to keep either Correa or Springer or Brantley. And all signs point to Brantley being gone because of what the market is going to pay him. And, you know, we just seem to be hearing a lot of buzz about George Springer. I know he's going to be moving back to the East Coast with his wife. And I'm really worried that he'll be gone too. Can you afford to lose Brantley Springer and Correa over the next two years? Yuli's only a one-year deal and with a club option on the second year. So that's just a throwaway. And then what you like the way you're seeing him. You know, I don't know. What, what is it going to cost? I, I don't think Carlos Correa was a guy that they fought over $750,000 last arbitration. So And they gave him $5 million. This year he's making eight. I, he's not he's not a he's not a twenty million dollar guy. I, if if you can get him for ten a year, if you can get a Carlos Correa for ten, maybe twelve million a year, I could see him doing a four year deal with him. Uh, but at you twelve can't count million, on, you can't count on. Well, if he's going to be a guy that you can count on, and he's going to be play the shortstop that he plays, and maybe hits in the eight hundred OPSs, yeah, he'd be worth that. He's I think the best he's going to look for six, in baseball. I think he's going to look for six years at one hundred and fifty million. Twenty-five million a year, six no years. Way. You can't tell you. You can't pay that. You can't. There's no pay way that. he gets that. There's and I, no and way he gets that. I think he's going to be going for that, and all it takes is one. Uh, but you know, this coronavirus, the market may soften up. I mean, we've seen a softer market, and with analytics being the way they are, a lot of analytics groups 
who are running up, you know, the teams, they're not going to see Correa. They're going to look at the data and they're not going to see a guy that's a good buy at 25 million plus. They're not. That's not what the numbers would yeah. say. It's maybe one of the reasons why the Astros might let him walk. But I just know from a core standpoint, it's going to be really tough to keep winning at this level that you're used to. With you got some good young pitchers, so don't forget, John. In two years, you're going to have a, an inexpensive pitching staff, a relatively inexpensive pitching staff. So maybe the Astros will balance that out. I'd love it if Carlos Correa would do like a quarterback deal and take a three-year deal and give him maybe 15 million a year for three years. You know, 45 million and say, look, you'll still be able to hit the market uh, in your prime. But I just don't see that being the case. I think he wants his long-term deal. 